What is drag? What causes it? And why do jets have those long pointy noses? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the fourth class in the Principles of Flight series. Today we're going to be looking at drag. Drag is a byproduct of design and of the lift production process itself. This class follows on from the class in which we talked about lift. Lift and drag are based off of similar concepts, so I'd recommend going back and watching the video on lift if you haven't already done so before starting this class. Aerodynamic drag is caused because particles in the air need to be forced out of the way as we travel through it. Otherwise, we would gather them up, something like a snowplow, gathering snow. The very action of moving them out of the way requires energy. So the air molecules that are getting moved out of the way often take the energy from the object traveling through it. This energy transfer is felt as a resistance to the direction of motion, which will need to be overcome in order to travel through it. Drag falls into two main types, induced drag and parasite drag. Parasite drag then splits down further into skin friction and form drag. In the last class, we looked at the upward component of our resultant aerodynamic force. That was lift and it directly opposes the weight of the aircraft. Induced drag is the other part of this resultant aerodynamic force. It's the point that opposes our direction of travel. It's called induced drag because it only exists when lift is being generated. It is only induced when lift is being generated. Induced drag is also added to by vortexes, but for the purposes of now, just think of it as this second component to our resultant force, the horizontal resultant force. Form drag is to do with the shape of the object and it is caused because the air hits the object and slows down rapidly. We know that static pressure plus dynamic pressure is always constant. So when the dynamic pressure here falls all the way to near zero, the static pressure goes through the roof. On the far side of the object, the air now has somewhere to flow to, so the dynamic pressure increases and the static pressure decreases. So you end up with a situation where you've got high static pressure in front of the object and low static pressure behind the object. And because we know pressure flows from large to small, you get a net resultant force backwards which is the opposite direction of we are moving. If you reduce the area of air that is becoming slowed down, so you have a very small area here at the front of the object, that means that the air will not slow down to a complete stop in such a large spread out area, which means your static pressure will not go up as high. And then you can smooth things out and have a large area at the back where the static pressure will then be relatively low. So up here, you've not got that much of a high pressure. And up here, you've got quite a low static pressure. So you will feel a little bit of a resistance, but nothing near as much as this. This is the reason why fast traveling aircraft have those pointy noses, because the gradual change in shape is much more or less dramatic in terms of form drag than a straight edge like this because the area of air that is being slowed down is much less. Skin friction drag is caused by the surface or skin of an aerofoil or wing. To understand skin friction drag properly we have to move away from some of the assumptions we made about air being an ideal fluid. The main one that we're concerned about is air is viscous. The ideal, mod, ideal fluid model assumes that air is not viscous, but air is viscous. At a molecular level, the small imperfections and roughness on the surface appear quite large to a molecule of air. 
so a molecule of air will get trapped in these imperfections and pulled along with the wing as it flows through the air. These trap molecules will then in turn pull other molecules along with it as it goes because air is viscous to some extent. The situation you end up with is these layers of molecules and each layer is being pulled by the one below it and the one below it. Because they're not always getting pulled by the starting layer of molecules, these forces that they're being pulled along with are unequal, creating shear forces between the layers of these molecules. So when we're flying an aircraft, we also need to pull along all of these layers of molecules with us as we go. And the shear forces between them are what we feel as resistance or drag. So if we can trap fewer molecules on our skin, on our surface of our wing, then we will drag fewer molecules and our layers of dragged along molecules will be lower, will be smaller, and overall it will produce less drag. The layer of air that is dragged along with the wing, instead of being deflected around it, is known as the boundary layer. The air in the boundary layer has a relative speed of zero to the wing surface right at the very point where it touches the surface. That's the point where our molecules are fully trapped and the relative speed is exactly the same as the wing, so it is zero. This boundary layer is very thin, but it is very significant and any contaminants that are caught in this boundary layer, like frost or ice, can increase the amount of skin friction and cause a wing to vastly underperform. The boundary layer can have either smooth laminar flow or rough turbulent flow. A laminar flow boundary layer will typically only be a few millimeters in depth. And because the flow is roughly going parallel to the wing surface, and the ordered nature of laminar flow in general means that the shear forces between these layers of molecules are not great because there's no changes in direction or speed to overcome really. This means that the drag in a laminar boundary layer is low. After a certain transition point, laminar flow becomes turbulent. A turbulent boundary layer is typically a few centimeters in depth. The ordered nature of the laminar flow completely breaks down and the flow directions change and the speed can vary and because of these large shear forces between the layers it means that the drag is much higher in a turbulent flow than a laminar flow. The boundary layer will eventually separate from the surface when the turbulent flow loses the kinetic energy needed to overcome the friction in the lower layers aka the dynamic pressure falls as the air slows down towards the end of the turbulent boundary layer and friction starts to become more dominant. The friction will pull the air to a stop in the lower layers while the air in the higher up levels still has the kinetic energy it needs to overcome that friction. The air that stops moving increases in static pressure and an adverse pressure gradient is formed causing air to flow in the wrong direction. This is because the pressure gradient is now more dominant compared to the kinetic energy and it creates a flow pattern after the separation point that is very complicated. Separation points are complex and I'm going to link a video down below to a more in-depth explanation of where they occur and why they occur. Combining the types of drag we just looked at, form, skin friction and induced, we can derive a coefficient of drag which is used as a measure of how much drag is produced per unit area and per unit dynamic pressure. A measure, in essence, of how much drag an airfoil will cause. Very similar to the coefficient of lift that we looked at in the lift class. To find a value for drag, we can then use the equation drag equals a half rho v squared s coefficient of drag. It's very similar to the lift equation that we looked at in the previous class because drag is reliant on the speed we go because of that induced drag is part of the resultant force and the dynamic pressure. So drag is dependent on half rho v squared. 
it's the pressure differential that causes that uh, resultant force to form. That's a pressure, we have to find it as a force for this equation, so we multiply by the area. And then we also multiply by the coefficient of drag, which is how much drag our aerofoil is producing. So in summary, induced drag is caused by the backwards component of our reaction force, as well as vortexes, which we'll come on to in the next class. Parasite drag falls into form drag and skin friction drag. Form drag is caused by the rapid slowing of the air, which means the dynamic pressure reduces and the static pressure increases. At the far side of the object, where the air has somewhere to go, the static pressure therefore reduces. You end up with a pressure differential and a net resultant force opposing the direction of travel, felt as drag. Skin friction drag is caused by the skin texture and the shear forces pulling layers of air molecules along in the boundary layer. The boundary layer is laminar and low drag until reaching the transition point. At that point it becomes turbulent with multiple directions and larger shear forces which results in more drag. The boundary layer eventually separates from the surface of the wing when the kinetic energy is too small to overcome the friction forces. Combining all the types of drag together, we come up with a coefficient of drag, which we then use in our equation. Drag equals a half rho v squared SCD.